Polygon box here. It is just off to the north of Bur Burning Springs. Again, tornado warning until 3.30 for Clay County, small part of Jackson County, and a small part of Owsley County. This is all part of a severe thunderstorm warning. This cluster of thunderstorms, we've got a little bit of rotation inside of this. And when it was back to the west, in Pulaski County, around Burnside, uh, we did have reports of funnel clouds. We had a little bit of damage and also an injury reported around Burnside uh, in that area. So this has had a history of producing some wind damage and some funnel clouds. So anywhere here off to the north of Manchester. Manchester, you're not in the tornado warning polygon. Uh, it's just off to your north. In fact, uh, even the severe thunderstorm warning is just to your north. It's really the northern part of Clay County up toward Burning Springs and then up uh, US 421 into the uh, southeastern part of Jackson County and then just clipping a little part of uh, Owsley County there. Uh, this thing's uh, rolling off to the northeast, a, a decent clip. And again, keep in mind, we've got that rotation there, but the leading edge of this all up and down it could potentially uh, produce damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. So moving off to the uh, east, northeast here. So some of the areas uh, impacted here over the next half hour, again, this goes until 3.30, uh, looking at Shepherd Town there at 3.11, 3.18 for Sexton Creek, Trixie at 329, and Buckhorn over uh, toward Buckhorn Lake there in the northwestern part of Perry County. That would be at about 345. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Meteorologist uh, Dylan Gaudette on the radar for us here. So we're going to jump around and kind of show you what's going on in general uh, again, uh, you see what's happening down uh, across southern Kentucky. Here's the bigger picture. A lot of stuff going on right now. Lexington kind of in the middle. We've got a pretty intense line of storms here from Frankfurt running up toward Maysville. A lot of heavy rain and thunder in Madison County. And you see Dylan popped on the tornado watch that is up until... 8 o'clock this evening for a good chunk of southern and southeastern Kentucky. This is the area that we talked about yesterday as far as being the favorite area for the potential for severe weather, isolated tornadoes, wind damage, and even some large hail, even though we have not seen that as yet. But let's, uh, let's zoom back in just a little bit closer on that uh, potentially tornadic cell. And if we take a look at the velocity data here, which is obviously uh, showing you what the winds are doing relative to the radar site. Now, right now, uh, anything in red is going away from the radar and anything in green is going toward the radar, which is up off to the northeast here in Jackson. So again, if you're in Burning Springs, and again, the rural area right there along the Jackson County and Clay County line there, right up there, you need to be in a safe place. Go to a basement if you don't have a basement, an interior room, the lowest level of your home, preferably an interior closet, bathroom. You want to put as much uh, real estate between yourself and the outside world, so away from exterior windows and walls. But again, the circulation on this is, is fairly broad. Usually we look for that tight couplet, and that's typically more of an indication that this thing may be on the ground. But given the history of this and the fact that it has produced some damage back into Pulaski County, some uh, uh, spotter uh, report of funnel cloud. In fact, we had a video of it uh, on social media and uh, a few reports of some damage. This thing has been packing a punch. And in fact, it's uh, the strongest storm that we have. The other issue that we've been running into with some of the late morning and early afternoon storms out into eastern Kentucky, a number of areas dealing with a lot of heavy rain and we're getting into some flooding. But again, you see the leading edge of this the severe thunderstorm watch, or severe thunderstorm warning, that is, again, Clay Jackson, Laurel, and Owsley, but the leading edge of this thing, again, it's coming up on Manchester, even though technically you're not in the severe thunderstorm warning, anywhere up and down this, again, Burning Springs, Manchester, and it's through Barberville, but heading toward DeWitt there in eastern Knox County. 55, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, entirely possible, but as you get these 
squall lines moving off to the northeast in this type of environment. If you lived around this area a while, you know how this works. Uh, we get these little notches on there where we can see little isolated tornadoes spin up very quickly, typically an EF0, EF1. It comes down, does a little damage, lifts back up, and then moves on. So these things get a little tricky, but anytime you see these little notches here, those are typically the locations that you can get these isolated spin-ups. And we do have that environment. As we talked about yesterday, we've got a big area of low pressure back to the northwest that is going to spin right through the heart of the Commonwealth as we go through the remainder of the afternoon and evening, and as we broaden things out, the center of this is back to our west, so we've got a ways to go. Again, the favorite area for severe weather is southeast Kentucky, east Tennessee, the Carolinas, they're right along that warm front, so they've got isolated supercells going up there, so a little more conducive uh, to uh, more widespread tornadoes. Again, just an isolated threat here and there. We're really concerned, again, about the damaging wind threat. And we also talked about hail. So far, haven't had many issues or really any reports of any large hail, but uh, we're only at uh, 315 right now. So we've got really the rest of the afternoon and early evening to go. So this thing goes for about uh, another 15 minutes for, again, Clay Jackson and a small part of Owsley County. And I really think, you know, McKee, it's off to your southeast. I think Jackson County is probably in the clear. It's literally right there, as you can see, on the Jackson County and Clay County line. Burning Springs there that runs north of Manchester, right up US-421, and eventually up to McKee. But it's, it's this area of it where you see this little notch right here. That's where your circulation is. So it's going to clip a little bit of Owsley County here, and then eventually head over, and there's extreme northwestern Perry County right around Buckhorn Lake. So as if this continues to move off to the east and northeast, it should sneak into, say, extreme southwestern Breathitt County, in addition to western and northwestern uh, Perry County, Oneida there, and again, south uh, southeast of Boonville. So I think in Boonville proper, of course, county seat of Owsley County, you're okay, although you've Got some very heavy rain, lightning, and some gusty winds headed your direction. If we get any storm reports, obviously anything on the chat. So they're continuing the warning, both warnings, the severe thunderstorm and the tornado. Okay, so Dylan telling us that uh, the severe thunderstorm warning until 3.30 and the tornado warning until 3.30. Notice how Laurel County has now been dropped because it has moved uh, the worst of it. There's London. It's, again, coming up on Manchester. So... Let's zoom back into that a little bit closer and switch over to the velocity data, and then after that, we'll put a storm track on it again. It's this area right here. You want to see the, the, the reds and the greens close together. It, it seems very, very broad, but again, it's all about the setup and the history of this particular storm. Back through Pulaski County, we've got video of a funnel cloud. We've got uh, some pictures of a little bit of damage uh, around the speedway there, and even a report of an injury at Birdside. We don't know what caused that. Uh, we're efforting that, but considering that this did show signs of rotation, a funnel cloud was spotted, and before they issued the actual tornado warning, uh, many times when you have this type of environment, they'll issue a severe thunderstorm warning, and they will put a possible tornado warning wording within that and that's what we had as we've been tracking this storm across southern Kentucky probably ah, for the last 25 to 30 minutes so this is really the one that we're concerned with more than anything but really right there where that arrow is in fact that little notch it's literally on the where Owsley County Jackson County and Clay County all come together right there. So putting a track on this thing, uh, some of the areas are going to be affected, southern part of Owsley County, and again, it may, it looks like it's going to sneak into the southern part of Breathitt, and then over here, here's, uh, here's northwestern Perry around Buckhorn Lake. So Trixie, that's coming up here within 10 minutes, Sebastian at 331, and then on down the line, 336, they're at Lucky Fork, Morris Fork at 342. So Let's uh, move back up to the bluegrass just to kind of give you an update because we have other showers and storms going on. They are not severe, but here in the metro area, again, a lot of heavy rain, thunder and lightning 
from Frankfurt running over to Georgetown, and all this is moving eastward. And you see all the lightning strikes with this. Just some general moderate to heavy rain running down I-75, and then Madison County, south of Winchester there, in southern Clark County. So that's what we're going to see as we go through the remainder of the afternoon. As that area of low pressure spins eastward, we're going to continue to see these pop. Over in Louisville, they've been lucky much of the day, but unfortunately, uh, it's been wet at Churchill Downs. That's what we expected. Not a washout for Oaks, but they may be dealing with some delays with the lightning over there. So you see the bigger picture, the solid rain that has created really some bigger issues over into western West Virginia. Huntington, West Virginia, reporting some big-time street flooding, uh, and they've got flood, uh, flash flood warnings over there uh, in Huntington. But we have a flood watch for basically the entire area until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning because we're not done with this. We're going to see several waves of showers and thunderstorms as we go through the rest of the afternoon and into the evening hours. And here's your tornado watch running from Monticello, Somerset, Mount Vernon, and then just literally about right where that tornado warning is right here. Basically along the Hal Rogers Parkway and Kentucky 80 out toward Pikeville and areas south. That's a favored area. Just looking at a lot of the data earlier, this was going to be the area of concentration as far as the highest tornado threat, which isn't overly high, but obviously it is non-zero as we have the uh, tornado warning on uh, ongoing right now here for about another uh, 10 and a half minutes. We're coming up on 320 right now, so that's still uh, in effect, and they have extended the severe thunderstorm warning until 4 o'clock, and that includes Breathitt, parts of Clay County, Owsley County, and Perry County. So, Hazard, you're not in the severe thunderstorm warning, but Buckhorn Lake right here is in northwestern Perry County. Boonville, it looks like the little notch right there, which has prompted the tornado warning. This thing is literally halfway between Boonville and Owsley County and Manchester and Clay County. So it's really that extreme northern part of Clay County right there. And I think it'll sneak into the southern part of Owsley County, maybe right there along the Perry and Breathitt County line as it continues uh, kind of that east-northeastward track. If you want to put another track on that, Dylan, just to give folks down the line a heads up here again. Basement's the best place to be. If you don't have a basement, an interior room, lower soul of your home, preferably closet, bathroom. You want to get away from exterior windows and walls. And of course, if you live in a mobile home, that's not where you want to be in a possible tornado. Those do not fare well at all. Hopefully you have a predetermined, safer place to go uh, for this kind of situation we've got out there this afternoon. So uh, the track on this, Trixie, coming up here in about six minutes at 326, Sebastian 332. Again, Buckhorn, Buckhorn Lake there, northwest of Hazard at 345. So that's about 25 minutes from now. Uh, Cano at 351, and then over toward Wolf Coal at, uh, looks like, a three, uh, a 345 there. And you see the tornado warning now has been extended off to the northeast. So clearly they are still seeing that bit of rotation. So now the tornado warning extended until 345 and includes Breathitt County now, southern part of Breathitt County, uh, Jackson County, Owsley, and Clay. And I really think, again, the, the biggest area of concern as this thing bows out just a little bit and probably uh, that little notch that you see right there, uh, that's generally where we see that thing wrap up and you can get a little circulation, a quick little spin up here. So it, it doesn't look overly tight, but given the history of this storm, again, if you're just tuning in here, to recap everything, we've got this line of thunderstorms that's moving across southern Kentucky. It did produce a funnel cloud, did a little damage back toward Burnside, and even had an injury as well. So uh, given that fact, uh, the tornado warning is out until the bottom of the hour for Clay Jackson and Owsley. I think uh, back toward, obviously, Anvil, Burning Springs, you're in the clear now. Uh, Oneida, it's just off to your north. So really with the track, it looks like southern Owsley County, just a small, small part of Clay County here inside that polygon. If you're anywhere inside that polygon, maybe we can go in a little bit closer, Dylan, just and see if we can pick up on any of the cities. So these communities here inside the polygon, we mentioned Trixie earlier. 
So it's about right on you. It may actually pass just to your north, South Fork here along State Route 11. Uh, it looks like where that circulation is, it's going to be fairly close to you. Arnett, Lucky Fork, Crockettsville, Canoe, these areas right here. It's all kind of where northwestern Perry into southwestern Breathitt and then into the southern part of Owsley County. So it's, it's, if you're inside the polygon, again, you need to be in a safe place. A basement, don't have a basement, interior room, lowest of your home, protect yourself, pillows, blankets. You've got a baseball helmet, bicycle helmet. It's always recommended. Again, these look to be fairly weak if they do reach the ground at all because, again, uh, the circulation with the velocity data isn't that tight. But even beyond that, this leading edge right here, that is apt to produce 55, 60 mile per hour straight line wind gust or maybe even greater than that. I mean, many times we can have straight line wind damage around here that does more damage than even a weak tornado would. So, Front and center, that part of it right there, inside the tornado warning polygon. So these are the communities. Again, Trixie, that's coming up here. Uh, literally, it's about right on top of you right now. You see the leading edge right there. We got Ricetown at 328, 336 there at Morris Fork, Talbot at 342. And again, Canoe as we head up into uh, the southern part of Breathitt County. That'll be within the next 20 minutes or so. So let's broaden things back out, uh, Dylan, and kind of put things uh, in perspective here. Just a lot of activity going on. This is the area of concern right here. So Jackson, it looks like this is going to pass by south of you. Now, you're going to catch some heavy rain, some gusty winds, thunder, and lightning. Hazard, probably along Kentucky 15 between Jackson and Hazard, at least that little notch right there. But other areas down Hyden in Leslie County, eventually Whitesburg, over toward Pikeville, this area of southern Kentucky. We already had a couple of tornado warnings earlier into Bell County and also into Harlan County. And then the stuff back here in the bluegrass region looks like a decent little line running here from uh, western Mason County down through Robertson County, just northwest of Paris, Frankfurt. And you see the activity in the Louisville metro area, and you see some lightning as well. So uh, maybe dealing with some delays on Oaks Day over in Louisville. So a lot of the energy concentrated again into southern Kentucky. So let's show you the, I'm going to show you the watches that we have and then we'll get back to tracking uh, the uh, tornado warning that we've got down in southeastern Kentucky. And again, we're going to stay on the air with this. Even though it impacts smaller communities, it impacts communities, and we've got to stay on for that. So uh, we will be on until the duration of these tornado warnings expire, which is going to be uh, about another 20 minutes from now. But the greatest threat for Rotating storms will be across southern and southeast Kentucky and uh, northeast Tennessee and uh, southwestern Virginia, and that goes until 8 o'clock tonight. That area of low pressure sp still has to spin through. This area has already been worked over by some pretty solid rain through the mid to late morning and early afternoon hours, and we've got the potential, again, with such heavy downpours possible, a flood watch is out for essentially all of central and eastern Kentucky overnight until tomorrow morning. By then, that area of low pressure will be to our east. We'll catch some of the wraparound. We're going to hang on to a few showers here in the bluegrass and into eastern Kentucky tomorrow as much cooler air filters in. we got a lot of rain-cooled air out there. We're only in the 60s across a lot of the area but we still have a lot of uh, warm, moist, and unstable air. It feels very, very muggy, especially if you've been in a, out at all today where it's not rainy. You can just kind of feel it in the air. So getting back to the tornado warning, coming up in about three minutes, this part of it, the initial tornado warning, that will be allowed to expire. But it's this area right here that is right along the Clay and Owsley County line. Boonville, you're in good shape as far as the tornado warning goes. Now, you're just right on the edge of the severe thunderstorm warning, which expires at 3.30 as well. Be interested to see whether Weather Service extends that farther to the northeast because anywhere up and down that line, but especially where it's bowing out right there, uh, Onita, again, if we can zoom in just a little bit closer. Oh, I, I see what you're doing, Dylan. We've got another severe thunderstorm warning down here. It looks like uh, cross parts 
uh, Bell Clay, Knox, and Leslie. So this is east of Barberville. It's basically from Pineville running out into far eastern Knox County, running up into northeastern Bell County, and then uh, eventually catching areas of Leslie County uh, south of Hyden. Again, it just barely sneaks into Clay and Leslie County. So really all up and down this line, and this is a, a classic setup here in central and eastern Kentucky. Squall line of storms. You get these little notches right on the edge of these. And you can get these little isolated, weak spin-ups. They go up. They go down fairly quickly. Usually, it's a fairly concentrated area. But given the fact that there's a possibility of that, we want to give folks a heads up and uh, allow folks to get in their safe shelter. Because even if it's you know, doesn't hit your particular area, if you happen to be in the area that it does, again, it can, it can do some quick damage. And this part of that line has had a history of producing some damage back in Pulaski County, where we did have, again, that report of a funnel cloud. We've actually got some video of that. We've got some pictures of some damage at the speedway there. And, uh, they're in Pulaski County. So with that radar signature and the ground truth, even an injury over there as well, we'll st we're still trying to get that info from the weather service of what caused that. But this jutting out here a little bit, and it's inside the tornado warning polygon till 345. Again, the, the, this part of the cell it looks like it's going to pass just north of Buckhorn Lake there in northwestern Perry County. Canoe southwest of Jackson and Breathitt County. And they're just to the southeast of Boonville in southeastern Owsley County. So this is the area. So Dylan, if we go in a little bit closer, show some of those communities and even kind of put a track on it here to kind of update things. But it's this right here. And I don't know what the velocity is looking, right, looking like right now if it's tightened up at all. Again, you see that little bit of a notch there. We'll put a track on it first, and then we can switch over and, uh, and take a look at the velocity. So, Trixie, it's through your area, up toward Morris Fork. Sebastian, probably right on top of you as we are at 3.30 right now. Lucky Fork within a few minutes. Morris Fork, we've mentioned these areas literally over the past 15, 20 minutes. Canoe at 3.47, 3.44 uh, for Talbot. So, Rolling across, again, the uh, southern part of Owsley County into southern uh, parts of uh, Breathitt County and just off to the north of Buckhorn there in, in, northern, in northern Perry County. So it, maybe back here a little bit. Again, nothing jumps out to me as far as the velocity goes, although it is spiking up a little bit. Uh, those are probably some stronger winds that are just right off the deck, and it doesn't take very much to get those down to ground level. So anywhere here in southeastern Owsley County, southeast of Boonville, uh, any of these communities, if you live in southern Owsley County and you live in southern Breathitt County, Morris Fork, Ricetown, Sebastian, it's just back toward the Taft community there, Arnett as well, Houston, any of these little communities that I'm calling out, again, be in your safe shelter, Basement is best, interior room, center part of your house on the lowest level if you don't have a basement. And of course, mobile home, not necessarily a place to be. Any reports, anything coming out at all, Dylan? Nothing for the weather service? So again, we'll continue to ride this thing out here. It does, like I said, anytime you get that brighter color there, it's broad, but that's an indication, again, the radar is up here. Anything in red is going away. Anything in green is going toward the radar. So those are some fairly strong winds around Taft along State Route 11 there, Conkling. And this thing is rolling toward Ricetown. Again, uh, Sebastian. And that goes until 345, anywhere inside this Tornado warning polygon. So here is the southeastern part of Owsley County. Here's the southern part of Breathitt County. Here's the Breathitt Perry County line. There's Buckhorn, Buckhorn Lake State Park. You're just right on the edge of that tornado polygon. But just given how the track of this is moving more northeast than it is eastward, unless it was to turn a little bit more to the right, I think it's going to stay north of you. And then Hazard's obviously down here behind me. And I, it, it looks like it'll be just south of J Jackson eventually going across 
uh, Kentucky 15, the main route running from Jackson to Hazard down here in southeast Kentucky. So, again, looking a little bit better there, and especially where you see that notch. That is almost a little bit of a hook, even though it's not on the leading edge, but we could see that spinning up just right along the clay Owsley County line there. So it's looking a little bit more impactful on radar. So it's generally one of these cases where many times these things cycle. They will spin up, they weaken a little bit, and then they spin back down. But just the fact that we've got that little bit of an appendage right there, a little bit of an inflow, and on the velocity data where we had that bright little spot, the couplet's not all that tight, but you've got some stronger winds. Southern part of Owsley County, and then over toward Canoe. Again, we've mentioned Canoe several times in southern Breathitt County, southwestern Breathitt County. Uh, this is headed your way. So I want to know if we can pull back out just a little bit so we can kind of show the entire line. So we've got this tornado warning here, and then we've got the severe thunderstorm warning down here into Knox County, parts of Bell County, just barely sneaking into uh, Leslie County and maybe clipping uh, part of Harlan County, although that's uh, that may be in the warning since the automated query is not picking it up because it's got other things that it's dealing with here. But all this right here, so... Jackson, you're going to see, again, heavy rain, gusty winds, but the strongest part of the line, southern Owsley, southern Breathitt, and you're going to see it in hazard. You're going to see, again, a, a line of heavy rain and thunderstorms rolling through that will have the potential of gusty to even damaging winds, and then that goes on down the line as well. So they've got a smaller, so don't tell me that you can see here that they have, have shrunk the tornado warning polygon down. So really kind of concentrating again on this area right here, basically from South Fork running up toward Morris Fork. There's Buckhorn. There's northern, northwestern Perry County. This is southern Breathitt. This is southern Owsley here. So it's, it's just an extreme southeastern Owsley County about to cross the county line right here into southern Breathitt. So Arnett, Ricetown, it's on top of you. Lucky Fork, Morris Fork. If you live in any of those communities, again, be in your safe place. Basement, don't have a basement. Interior room, lowest level of your home. Mobile home, not the place to be. They typically do not fare well with high winds or even weak tornadoes. So that's why during Severe Weather Awareness Week, month, we always get you to have your severe weather plan in place. So when we run into situations with days like today, you know where to go, you know what to do, and you got a predetermined place to go in the event you do, in fact, see a tornado. So we're at 335 right now. we got about 10 minutes to go before this thing plays out, and it is still continuing to show signs of rotation. So let's put a track on it, Dylan, if we can, and then we'll take another look at the velocity data, see what the winds are doing relative to the radar site and what kind of, uh, what kind of spin we've got with that. So with this thing moving off to the uh, northeast, some of the communities that will see this probably uh, you know, within the next 20 to 25 minutes, I mentioned Arnett there, uh, looks like uh, right there across the uh, southern part of Owsley County over toward Houston at 344. Uh, Talbert at 347 and Canoe yet again there in southern Breathitt County coming up at 349 and that's about 13 minutes from now. So it's making a little progress eastward. It's not, it doesn't appear to be just hauling the mail or trucking through here, but uh, it is making a little bit of progress. So let's switch over to the velocity data if we can and see. So again, where you see that, that, that brightness right there that's some very, very strong winds. And while the couplet is not tight, there's some, there's some broad rotation here in the fact that, you know, they've concentrated it on, on, on this area right here. This very easily could spin up a quick little tornado. And if anything, the leading edge of this, it's going to be easy. You're probably talking aloft 70, 80 mile per hour winds. The radar is up here. Remember, the, the beam is aloft. It's shooting up into the storm. And this is probably, it's close enough to the radar. It's only probably seven, 800 feet off the deck. So it's pretty low to the ground. And the radar site at Jackson sits up on top of the hill. So it has a little bit better view. So anytime you see that brighter blue, that's generally 
speaking from experience, uh, probably aloft a few hundred feet off the ground, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. Uh, you, you see that 67, 70, so fairly close. So Arnett along State Route 28 there, eastern Owsley County, western part of Breathitt County. This is headed right in your direction. We've got uh, about another eight minutes to go on the tornado warning here, but as this crosses out of Owsley County and into southern Breathitt County, Jackson's up here. And again, the radar site is pretty close, so it's probably only maybe 400 feet or so off the ground. That's why it's doing a better job of picking this thing up. But this is as far as the winds that are going toward the radar. And again, literally, it's up here behind the banner. So it is not that far away from it. So it's picking up on those strong winds just off the ground. And it just does not take a whole lot to get those down. So straight line winds are a possibility in addition to a quick spin up of an isolated tornado. And if we can jump back to the reflectivity here, Dylan, and you can see this thing jutting out. Now it's bowing out south of where the tornado warning is, but we've got the severe thunderstorm warning and that does include northwestern Perry County, Buckhorn, you're in that, clipping the northern part of Leslie County and then up into Breathitt County. Boonville, it's on top of you right now. It's really out in eastern Owsley County uh, where we've got the potential for wind damage. You're seeing just torrential rain through Boonville down toward Oneida in Clay County. And so Hazard, you're going to see it up toward Jackson uh, here within the next oh, 15 to 20 minutes. All this is going to come rolling through. Let's go down south and show the other severe thunderstorm warning while we're on this. This goes until the top of the hour. It is now well to the east of Barberville. In fact, the leading edge of this is basically out of Knox County. It's just clipping a little bit of Bell County and really front and center on this is going to be Leslie County. So Hyden, it's probably about maybe 10 minutes out from you and then running down toward Moselle in southern Leslie County. You see how it just is very, very jagged in any of these little notches right here in this type of environment with the spin that we have in the atmosphere. We get that shear, as we call it. It's a change in wind direction with altitude. And a lot of times those that shear will set the updrafts in motion as far as getting a, a tornado to spin up. So even though we were just in a severe thunderstorm warning right now until 4 o'clock, don't let your guard down here across far uh, southern and southeastern Kentucky here. Harlan, you're okay, but uh, let's... Let's zoom back in on the tornado warning here since we, uh, we're getting close to expiration here in about five minutes. And again, we'll stay with this until the tornado warning expires. If they do kick it downstream, we'll stay on with you until the threat goes away. Now, the threat's not going to go away completely until we probably get uh, into the mid to late evening hours, especially in southeastern Kentucky. So we are apt to jump on again. So here's your leading edge. And it actually looks like it's, it's almost bowing out a little bit more, Dylan, just south of where the tornado warning polygon is. And that has a tendency to happen with these squall lines as they move eastward here. So Buckhorn and Buckhorn uh, Lake State Park, you might see some very, very strong winds, even damaging winds coming your way as this looks like it's beginning to bow out just a bit. But when you get a bowing segment like that, many times on the northern edge of it, you will get an isolated tornado spinning up. And this is where we've been seeing the rotation signature and you see where the tornado warning polygon is. That's where we've got it. So we've mentioned our net for about the last 20, 25 minutes. It is on top of you now. Canoe, we've mentioned you a lot as well. Talbert, Crockettsville, this is coming your way. State Route 28, State Route 315, southern part of Breathitt County. Here's the county line right here. Here's Owsley County. Here's southern Breathitt County. Really zooming in tight so we can let some of these communities know this is coming your way. And 55, 60 mile per hour winds, entirely possible with this. Of course, you're going to get some heavy rain, torrential rain, and that may even create some flash flooding because that part of the state has seen some very, very heavy rain. They've issued a flood advisory for these same areas as well. 
So Dylan's telling me they have issued a flood advisory, and that's when you get some of your smaller streams and creeks, especially in some of the valley areas there, you know, with this being the mountains of southeastern Kentucky, you get down in, in some of those valley areas and get that water rushing down off of the hill, and it goes down into the valley, and it can really get some of those streams and creeks to rise very, very quickly. So even though it's not a flash flood warning, it's just a flood advisory, just be cognizant of that in addition to the wind damage threat and the tornado threat. So we still have the tornado warning going for really southern Breathitt County, extreme eastern Owsley County. I think you're good as far as the tornado threat goes. Boonville, you've got torrential rain, southern part of Owsley County, torrential rain, a lot of lightning as well. Not gonna wanna be out uh, at all as this blows on through and you see how the line trails down and anywhere where it's bowing out, especially right here, just west of Buckhorn, because there's northwestern Perry County off to the northwest of Hazard. And it's almost maybe shifted again, that leading edge. But typically, if you bow out up here, you'll get a little bit of rotation, and that is in that tornado warning polygon. We got about a minute and a half until this expires. We're at 343, coming up on 344. This tornado warning is set to expire at 345, and you, again, see the rotation there. Those bright colors, that's only about probably 500 feet off the surface. Very easy to get straight line wind damage out of this, but considering the bow is down here, maybe that bit of rotation right over our net, crossing out of Owsley County, at least that part of the circulation, because there's a county line right there. Here's Owsley County, here's Western Breathitt County. It's going to head right over toward Canoe, Little eventually, maybe Wolf Coal if it shifts to the south a bit. You're good as far as a tornado threat, at least that part of the line in Jackson proper in Breathitt County. Same story for Hazard, but everywhere across those counties, Leslie County, Perry County, and Breathitt County, besides what we've got here, which again, that's even, am I seeing things, Dylan, or is that spiked up even more? Okay, so there's your circulation right there coming out of Owsley County and heading into Breathitt County. We're at 345 right now, so they're either going to extend this farther to the east or they're going to let it ride, and you see 345, it is gone. So if we can put the reflectivity back on, uh, Dylan, and we'll give you one more little update here, and then we'll send you back, continue to monitor this, and cut back in if we end up with any other tornado warnings. But this part of the line right there at Buckhorn Lake State Park in Buckhorn, this is where you could see some wind damage. And then up here, southwestern part of Breathitt County, Owsley County and up toward Lee County, Beattyville, just torrential rain. Don't forget about the flood threat and all this as well, especially with all that water, heavy, heavy rain rushing down off the hills, down into the valleys. We get... Yeah, look at that. That pulled that sign down too. And yeah, it takes some good winds to do that, Justin. So yeah. uh, we, look, got, we got to keep a close eye on this cell because now I believe... We're dealing with something that uh, has has actually put a tornado on the ground and led to some damage. Definitely, you know, that's the same storm. I, I did track it all the way back. That this is the same storm now that's in Owsley County and it's crossing into Breathitt, and they've extended. The tornado warning. It's, it's just coming in here. So uh, Breathitt and Owsley County, new tornado warning until 4.15. Uh, at 345, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over our net community. We were giving headway to, lead, uh, again, lead time uh, or seven miles southeast of Boonville, moving northeast at 30 miles an hour. You will notice it is a very, very small polygon. It's not covering most of Breathitt County. It's not even covering most of Owsley County. It is a small area, but a small area is still somebody. And somebody is just as important as everybody, all right? So we're going here into eastern parts of Owsley County now, if we still have a tornado right on top of our net. You see how the radar here in the reflectivity 
That's the radar finding where it's raining here, these colors. You see how this is all kind of wrapped up here and there's a bit of a weakness right on top of Arnett in there where you get, you go from the reds and the oranges down to like a green, there's like a weak region here. If there is a tornado, it's gonna be right on top of Arnett and it's gonna be heading toward Houston, Sebastian's Branch, uh, over toward Canoe Road, Canoe, uh, Houston, uh, Turkey, likely just south of you, but close enough by you need to be in your safe place. Uh, there's a, a, a tracker that is taking uh, at least a strong part of the storm where it's heading. Yeah, the northern part of the storm is strong too, but the rotation is a little farther south, but still encompassing a lot of the communities that I was just looking at. I want to go back to uh, one of our shear products or rotation detector. Uh, looking a little weaker than it was a moment ago, but the National Weather Service sees that how this storm has been trending throughout the last 30, 45 minutes to an hour that they see enough rotation there that there could be a quick spin up tornado, whether it's weak or if it's just even straight line winds, that's why they're keeping the warning going. And Chris, I saw that you were highlighting taking the uh, reflectivity back or at least the velocity back. Let me yeah, clear I'm taking off it back, that. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling up our debris detector. I want to go back and look at this cell just to see if folks with this uh, type of radar, the debris detector simply just shows if we're getting some of that debris that has been lofted up within the storm. And uh, typically that that will show up on radar. So I wanted to go back and just simply analyze uh, this, this storm to see if we got back uh, any sort of reflectivity on debris detector that could have potentially uh, have pointed at that, that tornado. And that's, that's the difficult thing, Justin. You know, with these, these tornadoes, these type of events, they're, they're so quick. And that's why we, we always get on air and we say, folks, listen, just treat it like it is a tornado. Even if it doesn't touch down, well, hey, we played it safe, we're okay. If it is, it could happen so quick. These, these quick spin-ups are down, they're back up. Sometimes they bounce, sometimes they're up and down, up and down, and that's probably why we've kept this tornado warning going. Um, you know, not seeing a ton with debris detector there, but it yeah. certainly, had, certainly had that look to it. So, um, man, that's, uh, and that's the same storm, Justin, that now that has been tracking north and eastward, then they issued that tornado warning, and of course, like you've been talking about, very narrow window here with this tornado warning, but it is there and it's showing some still high reflectivities. Look at that. I mean, you still got a little bit of that uh, almost spin, it looks like. And, and what I'm talking about is right here. We're seeing what looks to be a little bit of spin and it's gonna be the leading edge of this where we could get some of the wind, but also it's spinning and we're, could be talking a brief spin up tornado right there that is now working into western portions of Breathitt County. This is south and west of the city of Jackson. So folks, right now you're fine. But as the storm continues to move towards the north and east, folks there in the city of Jackson, I would suggest go ahead and taking cover just to play it safe. And like Justin has talked about earlier, get into that most interior room within your home. So let's put a tracker on this storm. I wanna just really look at this storm and, and track it as we head into the next five or 10 minutes because looking back at over some of the recent data, a big concern and some of the velocities that we've been seeing, especially over the last uh, 40 minutes or so, bit concerning. And again, this storm is moving towards the north and east between 30 and 35 miles per hour. So it's all about lead time now, folks. And you need to just go ahead and consider getting into your safe place. The strongest part of this cell is tracking north and east. So folks there, uh, Canoe, Copeland, uh, down to Little Haddocks, Lost Creek, Quicksand. Listen, over the next 10 to 15 minutes, the strongest part of this rotating cell, this tornado warning, is moving north and east. So it's a good idea to go ahead and think about that safe place and start thinking about executing that safe plan as we head into the next five or 10 minutes because this cell, this storm, is moving north and east. Looks like we got Severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued to our south, and now, Justin, they're taking this all the way down. Folks there in Hyden, all the way down into Harlan. So we're talking more potentially damaging wind gusts, some heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning. That also includes portions of Perry County and the city of Hazard there. So it looks like southeastern Kentucky right now under the gun as far as those storms are concerned. And you can see the strong to severe thunderstorms mainly across far southern and southeastern Kentucky. But Justin just had a report, someone tweeted a photo at, at me about uh, five minutes ago. 
And we had some hell being reported in the city of uh, Georgetown, some pea-sized hell. So this cell, not severe, it is strong, capable of not only the heavy rainfall, but the gusty, potentially damaging winds, and now some pea-sized hail, and we do have a new tracker on it right here. This is the BTI, only a 2.1, but notice the storm top there, nearly 27,000 feet. When you start seeing those storm tops climb higher and higher, that means that storm is getting stronger and stronger. So these storms along this line beginning to pick up some steam as they track towards the north and east. So folks there, just north in Cynthia, Harrison County, you're getting it right now. Heavy rainfall, some gusty winds, some lightning. It's likely booming out there. There's a lot of lightning showing up and some thunder along with that pea-sized hell being a possibility. And this is stretching towards the north and east, now approaching far western portions of Fleming County. Let's go back here to Lexington. Yeah, we're just seeing some light to moderate rainfall that's now beginning to make its move into the metro. Far northern Fayette County picking up on some heavier rainfall. Scattered showers, some storms showing up to our south, to our southeast. Again, what we're watching is this storm that's now moving into Breathitt County, heading towards the city of Jackson, just south of Jackson. But look what we're getting here. I, wanna, I, I gotta take a look again at velocity here. Look at those winds. Let's get our eyedropper and see exactly what we're talking about. So winds, again, they're up there. Also with the rotation, this is a, a big concern with this storm. Justin, are you seeing any reports, anything else showing up as far as this tornado worn storm and as it's been moving north and eastward through portions of eastern Kentucky since passing through uh, Pulaski County earlier? Thankfully, no, at least, new reports yet, but we do have uh, in Owsley County the tornado warning has been canceled for you. So the rotating part of the storm that's left has now crossed over into Breathitt County. So here's Jackson. You're not included in that. You go into extreme southern parts of Breathitt County, really, uh, south central, really. That's where we're looking at possible rotation. Still those areas that Chris was mentioning. Um, still some brighter shades of greenish blue here. Those are winds at least, even if we don't have a tornado, those are winds that are at least 58 to 60 miles per hour. Enough that it can obviously bring down some trees. Chris was showing you that video about 15 minutes ago uh, back in Burnside and other parts of Pulaski County, Golden River, Laurel County, uh, where we had some wind that obviously brought down uh, some trees. So we're treating this uh, as long as this tornado warning is issued here. We're going to stay with you. It's for Breathitt County until 415. Severe thunderstorm warning to the south. We'll look back down here. This is for, this is going to be uh, farther to the south. So we're looking down into Harlan County. That's outside of our coverage area. But you come up to the north, Leslie County. That's our viewing area. We go over into Perry County. That's severe thunderstorm warning till 415. Leading edge of that, you'll see here coming through Hyden right now, uh, coming all the way down toward um, just about Harlan as we speak. We have winds that could gust up to about 60 miles per hour and the potential for some large hail there. But uh, still, basically, the storm of the hour, so to speak, has been this one that has had the history of producing not only just some rotation, but uh, the history of producing some damage going back into Pulaski County. That was the funnel cloud on this storm was reported at 152. It is now 355, two hours later, and the storm is still going. I want to look at, uh, at the track. This is what we call rotation detector, all right? Looking back at the track. It goes all the way back here, Burnside's here, south of Somerset. Here's London. You see how it's a little ragged here, but as the storm made its way into Owsley County, we went from weak rotation to at least being some stronger rotation there, crossing just south of Boonville and making its way over now into Breathitt County, south of Jackson. So that's why we're staying with this. Uh, the storm still shows indications of rotation and the weather service is keeping the tornado warning going. Just north of that, a new severe thunderstorm warning, including 
the city of Jackson. Now, here in the northern part of Breathitt County, there is a storm track on that part of the storm. Look, winds that uh, are capable of or capable of going up near 60 miles an hour, that's going to be near shoulder blade at 359. Strongest winds are basically on top of you as we speak. Uh, we get down Frozen Creek 408. We go all the way down to Jackson 408. Same story. Uh, Van Cleve 412. Portsmouth at 413. So small communities here within Breathitt County. Uh, but still a lot of lightning, heavy rain, and gusty winds. Chris, this area of rotation, it's it's starting to broaden more, uh, which leads me to believe that, I mean, yes, we could still get a spin-up tornado here, but it is definitely spreading into a, for sure, larger area of some straight line or at least strong downburst winds that are coming east here if we don't have a tornado. There, okay. Okay. Um, Hey, Justin, Let's, I got, yeah, I got uh, Chris Hall. Okay, he is a 606 storm chasing, and and he is actually on this tornado warning, this storm right now. He's in. Uh it, he said Clay Hole, uh, which is by the old drive-in. This is just south of Jackson, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Uh, but he is on this storm, so I want to pull up radar. And what we're going to do is, Chris, you're on. So let, tell yeah. tell us what you're seeing, bud. Really, a lot of them, ominous clouds. You have, you can tell there's a lot of inflow. You have clouds that are coming from the east to the west back into this storm. Mm -hmm. uh, can't really, you know, there's no really defined lowering any clouds, no wall clouds or anything like that. But definitely some ominous clouds and a lot of scud clouds as well. Okay. Yeah, folks, and, and listen, with these scud clouds, a lot of folks, a lot of times, think these are tornadoes, but they're simply not. They're just the leading edge of this storm, and typically you can get scud clouds in a high, moist environment. And we have a lot, you know, a lot of moisture to work with, so Chris is right there, and he's keeping a close eye on things. Uh, Chris, have you seen any other damage? I know we had reports uh, in Burnside, and you shared some of those photos with me, and I put those on air. Uh, anything else that you're hearing or seeing with these storms? As of right now, no, but uh, with, as as you know, Eastern Kentucky is very mountainous. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of reports until the storm's moved on past because there's not a lot visually that you're going to be able to see while the storm is mm -hmm. coming through. Okay. All right. Well, Chris, appreciate the report. He is, again, folks, just south of Jackson. He is where this tornado warning is. We're going to be keeping uh, at close contact with him. Chris, stay safe out there, and uh, something happens, give us a call back, and we'll get you back on air to get folks updated, okay? All right, buddy, we'll do. All right, thank you. Yeah. Justin, back over to you, bud. Yeah, I want to go back north with the storms that are coming through the, the bluegrass right now. A lot of folks, I mean, they see us on for a tornado warning. Uh, and when storms come rolling through, they obviously wonder if is there's anything severe here. Well, if we're looking now, storm coming out of Harrison County into parts of Bourbon County, right on top of really, uh, you get back over toward uh, Centerville, you're heading over toward Shawhan. That's going to be next. Giving you some communities, Ewalt Crossroads 409, Shawhan 412, Kaiserton at 413, current at about 418 in the uh, Colville, uh, Colville Bridge area, or that's going to be about 426. This storm here, not severe, but just below it, because we're seeing indications of at least some hail that's getting up to about penny size. You need quarter size hail. Uh, that's about the size of uh, one inch in diameter. That's going to be rolling east. Very heavy rain, and the likelihood that we're looking at winds here coming out of northern Fayette into Bourbon and into Harrison County of at least 40 miles an hour possible, maybe a little bit stronger than that. So uh, that's the storms that are here in the bluegrass. Uh, Fayette County, we're mainly just looking at, yeah, some heavier downpours. Nothing really severe here. Uh, downtown Lexington, some lighter rain. I know UK has had graduations ongoing today. A lot of folks coming out. People are coming home from work, 4 o'clock. It's the weekend. They want to know what they're going to experience. And on that commute here in the city, yeah, just mainly heavier rain. Not seeing any hill indicators there, but something that could definitely slow you down. We'll go back down to South Eastern Kentucky we go because the one tornado warning and a few severe thunderstorm warnings do remain. The tornado warning for Breathitt County is till 415. It's four o'clock now. 15 minutes unless if they extend it further down the line. All right. So this is Breathitt County south of Jackson. Uh, some smaller communities. Still some still some strong winds here. Uh, likely still seeing some rotation now closer uh, getting on the northern fringe here uh, uh, of the warning toward the, the Kurt Road area. But let me flip over, looking at a few products here. Um, this is 
the velocity, the winds, all right? We look for reds and greens next to each other. Let me turn off the warning because I think that's what's showing up underneath. We're not any longer seeing reds and greens next to each other. So if there's anything here, could a spin up tornado still happen here in Breathitt County? Possible, but the likelihood that that's happening is going down. Yeah, Justin, we'd like to see that. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Chris just messaged me and said that still seeing a lot of scud out there uh, with this cell that is tracking just south of Jackson. Of course, uh, this is southern portions of Breathitt County. Uh, he said it's still uh, still seeing the scud, but it's he thinks is becoming more wind dominant. So uh, that's good news. It's still going to potentially bring the damaging winds, but maybe we're not seeing as much of that rotation as we once was. Uh, like like over the last 30 minutes or so that this storm has been showing. So I'm going to switch back over to velocity. Uh, getting a pretty good read on this, folks. The uh, the radar is right there in Jackson. So this storm is approaching. That could uh, play with the reflectivities just a little bit and what we're seeing. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, you still see some of the bright greens there. Uh, radar still showing some high wind gusts with that. So that's going to become an issue on top of, of course, not only some of that rotation, but the heavier rainfall. The folks there in Jackson, you do have a pretty good storm that's moving into your area as we speak. Jackson, uh, Fiveville up towards Bays. Yeah, all of these areas showing a stout storm, a severe storm that will bring potentially damaging wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. Also, some hail will be possible, but it looks like it's around a half inch or less. The BTI index on that is two. That is good news. Remember, we want a lower number when we look at that BTI index because the higher the number, the more likelihood of this storm producing a tornado. We work down the line some more. We're seeing another severe thunderstorm. This is for folks there in Perry County. Uh, Hyden picking up on the heavy rainfall. Leslie County picking up uh, on some of the strongest part of this storm, especially the eastern side. Uh, and when we switch over to velocity here, you can see that wind's not too bad. That's good news. But also still packing a punch. So gusty winds, heavy rainfall, some lightning looks likely. The good news is for folks there in both Leslie and Harlan County, not seeing much in the way of rotation with that severe thunderstorm, again, the storm of interest, as Justin said, is right here. And it's just south of uh, Jackson and Breathitt County. And that is the storm that we're keeping a close eye on. And we do have our storm spotter, Chris Hall, with 606 Storm Chasing. He is on that storm. In fact, I wanted to show you a picture real quick. He just tweeted at me. So you kind of get a, an idea of exactly what he's seeing, what we're seeing. And here it is. This is the storm. Again, he is in Clay Hole. Uh, and that is just south of Jackson. He's pretty much a dead center for the leading edge of this storm. But now I'm wondering, Justin, if that storm, that particular part of the cell starting to lose some of its energy, because look just north. Now Jackson, maybe the severe thunderstorm just to the north that's going to impact the city might be packing more of a punch. Yeah, that you can just see it by looking at the reflectivity itself here, how it's intensifying. So Jackson, get ready. You're about to be walloped with some heavy rain. Potential for a hail up to the size of quarters there into Jackson, respectively. Uh, a few flashes of lightning there and likely even some gustier winds. So uh, looking back there, uh, yeah, anywhere you see green here is where we are looking at some winds that are going toward the radar. Red is the winds that are going away from the radar. So we are seeing more straight line winds for sure uh, on the order this isn't showing as strong as likely what it is, but we definitely have the potential here to see some winds, uh, Chris, that are upwards 50, 60 miles per hour uh, with that storm heading straight into Jackson. I, I think they're going to probably allow um, this tornado warning to expire at 415 uh, unless if it spikes up. I mean, the intensity could it could it could strengthen once again. We've seen that where it's kind of pulsed, it's weakened, and then it's strengthened once again. Uh, but if you live anywhere in Breathitt County, you, you just need to be indoors on your lowest floor, away from windows, away from where debris could fly into the windows there, uh, into your home, and, and stay there until obviously the storm does pass on by. Um, right now, total strikes four. Um, near five mile, we have a positive lightning strike. So yeah, a cloud of ground lightning strike there uh, over toward Wolverine. Um, you get? Did you find anything? I, I 
didn't see any damage reports, so that's good news. I was checking uh, the NWS chat, checking in with our partners uh, over at the Jackson, Jackson National Weather Service, uh, not seeing any damage reports as of right now, so that is good news. But again, this, this cell, this storm did have a history of not only producing damage, but now we have some video evidence of what is likely a weak tornado that has moved through portions of Burnside, Kentucky, and that cell tracked from southern Pulaski County and worked north and eastward. And here we are now in Breathitt County with that tornado warning that is still ongoing. As far as what we're seeing across the rest of central and eastern Kentucky, numerous showers and strong to severe storms ongoing. Here's what we're also keeping an eye on. Look back to our south and southwest. We still have a lot of activity going on for folks there in Knoxville and points west and south. So I want to pull up the Knoxville radar real quick and just get a better look at some of the things that we're seeing as far as those storms are concerned. The reason why I'm doing this is simply because a lot of this activity will be working right back into southern and southeastern Kentucky uh, as we head into the next couple of hours, which is going to keep things on the active side. Again, severe thunderstorm warnings. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings bringing potentially damaging wind gusts and some large hail showing up across eastern Tennessee. So that could become a problem or an issue for us, especially for our eastern and southeastern communities. All right, let's bring it back home. We'll go to radar here just to show you what we're looking at here in Lexington. Let's zoom way in. And we're seeing some heavy rainfall, especially some pockets of heavier rain across the northern one half of the viewing area, or the, the Fayette County, I should say. Still raining pretty hard in Georgia town but the strongest part of that storm now to your east folks there in paris it's knocking on the door heavy rainfall some lightning thunder some small hill will be a possibility there and this is stretching towards the north and east along 62 for folks there in cynthiana heading into eastern harrison county and now folks in fleming county heads up you're going to have some of these storms marching right into your area right now you're on the dry side but again keep in mind for the potential for some strong, even some severe thunderstorms that could be working into your area. We zoom things back to the south. We're still tracking out some of the scattered showers and storms along I-64 and points to the south from Mount Sterling over towards Frenchburg. Folks there in Stanton right now picking up on a heavy soaker. You can see that with all the reds and yellows showing up. And then we get into some of the stronger and severe storms. And look at this, Justin. This could be some good news here. I think they're going to allow that tornado warning to expire at 415 and they've issued a new severe thunderstorm warning that will take us till 430 and this is for eastern portions of uh, Breathitt County so that's good to see want to check in on something else we just got another marker that popped up here let's pull up the BTI okay not too bad it's a lower number the storm top on that not too impressive but we need to keep an eye on it because the storms just south of that have taken off we have severe thunderstorm warnings for folks there in Perry County heads up and hazard it's knocking on the door and it's going to bring potentially high wind gust and that heavy rainfall and it looks like this continues all the way through southern Perry County getting into Harlan County for folks there in far southeastern Kentucky uh, so let's take it back home and let's clear some things out. What are you getting, Justin? They to drop early. They drop it. They canceled it, the tornado warning for Breathitt County. So that's great. That's great news. Yeah, yeah. it's good news. Uh, so uh, just a quick little rundown here of everything we get going on. And then we're going to send it back to programming and obviously keep a close eye on the remainder of the storms that are coming through the area today. Tornado threat for now has ended in Breathitt County. Uh, we were talking about that the last about 15 minutes or so that we were seeing the storm intensity or at least the potential for rotation weakening. But we still have have some stronger winds here that are coming through Breathitt County. Hence, severe thunderstorm warnings that remain for Jackson and also just southeast of there. That warning is going to go until the new warning is running. Let's see, they just issued that. That goes until 430, all right? So we have the potential there for some winds that could get up to 60 and hail about the size of quarters. Our friends down to the south running through Perry County, severe thunderstorm warning here till 415, so about five more minutes. That storm's also trending a little bit weaker. And then back into uh, the metro area, we're looking at strong storms, not severe, coming into Paris now. Cynthia, you've been, been repeatedly seeing some heavier rain. I wouldn't be, uh, I would be concerned about potential for some localized flooding there if that storm continues. That will keep moving east with gusty winds, maybe some small hail. We'll definitely keep an eye on these storms for you for the rest of the day. But for Chief Meteorologist Chris Johnson, I'm Meteorologist Justin Logan. Stay with the Weather Authority through the rest of the afternoon. We'll send it back to programming now.
study for